Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Check this out. I have a viewer who goes by the code name of PG1. <laughs> now, remember the other dream we dealt with from Lynette that dealt with God hiding his people in a submarine, a war vessel. Well, I got another war vessel for you. This one is in a dream from PG-1. And in her dream, and I believe God wanted me to share this because when I was waiting for the next message, the word rapture came to my mind. Then this dream popped back in my head. And I said, oh, yeah, the rapture dream. PG-1 dreams that she is outside. Nice day, you know, everything looking normal. Then all of a sudden, everything gets chaotic. People are running over here, running over there, running to and fro, scared, hiding, just all kind of panic and chaos going on. And she's wondering, well, what's, what's going on? What's going on? So she sees people running and she starts running too. And she's got her baby boy with her and, and, and she's got him by the hand and she's running and she's trying to see where she should go. And all of a sudden she sees this vessel, which happens to be an aircraft carrier. So she runs to the aircraft carrier. She knows this is where she's supposed to go. Instinctively, she knows this. She sees one person sitting in there on the floor. She can't tell if he's a homeless man, just an old man or whatever, but she's looking for a blanket because it's a little cold in there and she wants to help him be warm. So she goes and gets a blanket and she covers him up. But she gets inside and she's trying to take her son in, but there's like a force field stopping him from being able to enter. And she's like, no. No, 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 my son's coming with me. And she's pulling, and she's pulling, and pulling, and pulling, and it's pulling against her. They're uh, like powers of darkness pulling against her being able to get her son in. And it's a tug of war, and a tug of war. Her battling with the dark, with the spirits of darkness, with wickedness in high places. She's battling. Doesn't that sound like spiritual warfare to you? Hmm. Anyway, she wins that battle and she finally gets him into the vessel. Then she realizes how cool it is and she knows her other kids have to get in the vessel, but she doesn't know where they are. So she goes out and she finds the blankets, but she doesn't find her kids. So she brings the blankets onto the vessel and then lo and behold, her kids make it on. So now she's got her two, her two older kids, her baby boy. But where is her husband? She has no idea where he is. So she's looking around and she's asking people, well, is this going to be the only ship? Are there other vessels? Uh, you know, tell me how many there are because uh, hopefully my husband's on one of those. Hey. Yeah, scary. Now, she said this is what happened. All of a sudden, while she's questioning what's going on and who's who and what's what and where is this one, that one, and the other one, she's got her kids, not her husband. And then all of a sudden, and she check it out. She said there were more people in there after she got the blankets and came in and the two older kids came, but only 50. Do you know how big an aircraft carrier is? You know how many people I think can hold? Only 50. You know that's the same thing Lynette said that the numbers of people were small, which means there are going to be a whole lot fewer people making it in on Judgment Day or when God splits the cloud, whatever you want to call it, during the rapture, there are going to be a whole lot fewer people than we believe. Check yourself out, please. Okay, then she said all of a sudden, 
the doors of the vessel shut and no one else could get on. When she said that, the first thing that came to my mind was Noah and the ark. There was no opening that 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 there was no opening that door once God shut it. Well, in this vessel, once that door was shut, it was shut. It wasn't opening up anymore. Then she felt the vessel moving up in the air. She felt like they were floating, they were sending up into the clouds. Mm. And all she kept saying was, oh, I hope my husband made it on one of them. I hope there's another vessel, and I hope he made it. I'm telling you, folks, that was a dream. Now, my question is Pat's two cents now. She woke up after that. My question to you is, where will you be when Jesus comes and splits the clouds? What will you be doing? What will he find you doing? Where will you be? Who will you be with? See, you have to ask yourself this question because the scripture says when all that happens, those that are righteous, let them be righteous still. Those that are unrighteous, be unrighteous still. There is no last minute changing of the mind. Oh, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Uh, yeah, in the name of Jesus. Oh, blah, 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 blah. No, it's over. Once that is visible, once that begins, it's over. There is no second chance of asking God, Oh, Lord, 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 have mercy on me. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, that worked for the thief on the cross. But when the rapture happens, it's a done deal. It's over. Everything is sealed. So whoever is living righteous, boom. Whoever is living unrighteously, <laughs> it's too late. Everlastingly too late. Okay. I'm going to stop and let you ponder on that dream. Where will you be when the rapture comes? God bless you.